Hey everybody, welcome back. I am Jason with Ben's Woodworking and I apologize for it being a while since I did my last video. I've just had a lot going on uh, with this upcoming move and everything has now worked out for the best. And today I just wanna start sharing with you guys what is going to be part one of a multi-part series on my new shop. And this one is going to be specific to the planning portion that I went through in order to uh, make the transition nice and smooth. So this is going to cover the current uh, space that I will be moving into. Also, excuse the audio. Uh, I'm not fully set up yet, so I'll try to do the best I can to make this sound uh, as least annoying as possible uh, for you guys to watch. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So this, what you see here, this is the garage on my new house. And so my house actually runs parallel with the road. So the road's over here. And my garage actually comes out towards the road, but my doors are facing my neighbor's house. So it's actually really nice. There's the attic above it, which is very well insulated. There are no rooms, nothing like that. Um, so this is the layout of my new shop. Now I'm gonna take you inside of the shop and I took about three photos and I'm standing over here in this corner just to give you guys some reference. So let's go ahead and take a look at the pictures. So like I said, I'm over in this corner. This is going down the garage doors. And so the distance from here to here is about 19 and a half feet, just, just under 20 actually. And then moving to the left, you'll see uh, down the back wall. And so this right here is where my door leading to my house is. Uh, this is not bordering the house. It's pointing towards my other neighbor. This wall here is pointing towards the road and this wall here is pointing towards neighbor. And this wall here leads into my home and right behind the door here is a laundry area and then another door which leads into the kitchen. So there's two doors there for a barrier of sound, which is good. Uh, I'm going to just bring up some things that I was looking for specifically in this garage, right? Because if somebody's moving, there's certain considerations to be made. So let's talk about this first one. So this right here is actually attic access. My plan for this, it works out great because it's in the garage and I can store stuff up here if I absolutely need to. What I'm going to get installed is going to be one of the drop down ladders, metal ladders that comes down. Uh, where I will be able to go and store stuff up in there. I don't plan on storing a lot of stuff in there. I'm just trying to keep as much stuff that's not shop related out of the shop. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you'll see in the photos, everything is already insulated, which is a huge plus to include above the garage doors. The only thing that's not insulated are the garage doors themselves. In the attic, there's actually about double the amount of normal insulation that you would find and that was a nice surprise when the home inspector came. So everything is very, very, very well insulated. So the next thing that I was looking for is where the uh, panel was for the house. And so I'm going to have a whole nother episode kind of talking about the electrical and how I went about it. But there is a 200 amp service into the house. The panel is right here. Um, and you'll see kind of where the layout of my electrical outlets and everything is going to be. Um, something else that I was looking at is these garage door rails, right? So these are a pain in the butt. Uh, my ceilings are nine feet tall. These are like seven feet off the ground. Well, I'm 6'2", so this is just barely over my head. So something that I'm doing is this rail here and this rail here, which is for my second garage door, which is going to be completely useless. All of that is getting pulled out this week, probably. The motor's getting pulled out, the rails are getting pulled out. This rail and the rail that's right above my head and the garage door opener, this is completely going away because I'm gonna have these lifted so they're about eight inches from the ceiling, which will give me enough clearance for all of my lighting. And that is kind of what led me to the next portion. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys along for kind of the steps that I took to get everything laid out. So the first mistake that I made is I initially tried to uh, sketch everything by hand, which was a terrible, terrible idea because every time I wanted to change something, I had to erase it and whatnot. So I reached out to my buddy Jay and since he's kind of like the SketchUp guru and I know that he did a very similar thing with his shop, we went ahead and started to lay 
stuff out. And what blew my mind is that while I tried to start doing this in SketchUp, it took me hours to try to do one setup because I didn't know anything about it. I go over to his place and we do all of these different variations in like a matter of like 15 minutes. So it's kind of disgusting actually. But uh, because of that experience, I've actually gotten quite a bit better at manipulating SketchUp simply because after I left his shop, I was kind of forced to learn how to make changes. So let's kind of go ahead and talk about some of the different designs that I have in mind or that I had in mind. And so, as you can see here, a um, little bit different from my previous shop. Obviously, I have the addition of the CNC machine, which will now be in the shop, and then the addition of a joiner planer combo, which will be in the shop. So for planning purposes, uh, we decided to go with those tools. And also, originally, I planned on keeping my Jet 3 horsepower dust collector. This is not the same model, but it's fairly close. Um, and so this was kind of the first design that I had in mind. So this is the single garage door. This is the two car uh, garage door. And so we're starting to talk about it, trying to figure out the most space. And basically the one thing that you're gonna see in all of these uh, pictures or layouts or designs is that my assembly table is going to be the center of my shop because 90% of what I do happens at this table. Um, and so we'll kind of get into that a little bit more here shortly. So this has pretty much stayed the same. I got my assembly table here and some sort of miter saw station here. This is not the miter saw station I'm going to go with, just an example. Um, drill press, band saw, um, table saw, joiner planer combo, CNC machine, router table, obviously, and uh, my drum sander. This orange, or excuse me, pink spot that you see here. This is actually in the event that my wife has to put a car in there. We took the measurements and I put it in there. Now, kind of wanted to build the shop up with the option of pulling a car in there if I needed to. So I wanted to keep that in mind as I started laying everything out to where I wouldn't have to move tools in the event that my wife goes in here, unless it's something very easy to move, i.e. like a router table, which that'll make more sense here in a minute. So this was design one. We pretty quickly realized I didn't like that. So moving on to design two, we made some adjustments, right? Trying to group some tools together, um, split these up, uh, kind of center the assembly table a little bit better. Uh, and again, just not really a preferred uh, layout, not really the way that I was planning. So we continued on, made some other adjustments, and this is where things started to click. And so, when I was able to say, okay, I don't need so much space for the uh, miter saw station, we just threw in Jay's uh, miter saw station here just for reference. And then we thought about putting the CNC machine over here in the corner um, and the router table here, putting the drill press bandsaw back together. And this is where we started looking at dust collection layout. And this helped immensely because I was trying to figure out you know, a very efficient way to use the least amount of ductwork possible. And so this was kind of the first draft of that. These right here, all these little lines with the pluses, that's making sure that I have a 32 inch, I believe, clearance uh, in every direction. So that's why you see those. That Again, that'll come into play here shortly. So I started to like this design, but the reason why this was so beneficial in my opinion is because if you look here, I know I got the one in the way and I'm not all savvy with hiding stuff yet, right? So I could essentially leave this up and still pull the car in. And if I really wanted to, to give more space for, you know, my wife to get my son in the car seat or anything like that, this is a foldable table, just folds down, right? So um, that was very helpful in the planning process. So this was kind of along the lines of what I was liking. So we continue to move on. And then we had this layout. And I know the dust collection portion of it is all bad right now, and I'm actually missing the joiner planer combo here. But uh, we just really made a couple of modifications, moved the drum sander over here. Um, and then also, I think this layout was actually a layout where I would have had my jointer and my planer, because you see the drop that comes down here. This was a backup in the event that I decided to keep the joiner and planer that I had 
um, and not go with a joiner planer combo. So those are the four designs that kind of kicked this whole thing off and led me to uh, what is now pretty much my final design, which I will show you now. Let me go ahead and get an overhead view for you guys. And you're gonna see quite a few changes um, in this one. And just so you guys know what you see over here on the left. So I'm toying with the idea right now. My assembly table is gonna be super awesome. Uh, and I cannot wait to start showing you guys that. I saw a really cool design um, that I think I'm gonna be building something very similar to it, but essentially it's MFTs on top of an assembly table. Uh, this is if I go with three, this is if I go with two, and it's just giving me a better idea of how much space. But as of right now, this is kind of what um, I plan on going with. So here's an overhead view of the shop. So what I've done, is if I go and show you this right here. So similar to what Mark Spagnolo uh, did in his shop, he actually walled off one of his garage doors. Well, that's why I told you those rails were coming out because I am now going to frame this door in and place a wall here. And this will now be, it's gonna be a plywood wall, which will be temporary. And that plywood wall will give me the ability to hang all of my measuring tools clamps, etc. right? So that's what this is gonna be for and it's immediately accessible next to my assembly table. So that was the first thing. Next thing is we went ahead and moved my drill press over to this side. I'm not concerned about having any sort of dust collection hooked up to it. And then I'm placing my drum sander, which obviously is on wheels and can be moved, but it's in line with everything to allow where I wouldn't have to move this in the event that somebody ever needed to park in here. And I could just flip this down, going around the room. I've got this wall here. And this will eventually be some sort of storage, whether it's lumber storage, whether it's garage tool storage, trash can, that kind of stuff. It's probably all going to go on this lower section and maybe some sort of storage or organization for this wall here for any odds and ends that I just can't get out of the garage, unfortunately. What you see here with my assembly table excuse me, my router table, is since this is movable, um, my dust collection here, which I'll actually talk about that here shortly, but there's a reason why I'm putting this here. One, I can move it out of the way if I ever need to, I can simply place it right here. Uh, and two, it's gonna give me the easiest access to dust collection, which when I talk about the dust collection, uh, I will address. Right here, I've got the CNC machine. It just happens to fit perfectly in this corner and does not inhibit the door in any way. And right here, I'm going to have my toolbox, which will also act as my workstation for the CNC machine because the cables and everything come up here. My toolbox is gonna to be here. I can keep additional materials in my toolbox and then run my computer right on top. Bandsaw is gonna go just over here against this wall. Joiner planer combo table saw, obviously centered in the room. Dust collection goes to both of those machines. I have plenty of space in feed and out feed, and I have plenty of space to walk through and will never have any issues. Uh, I can also use this portion of the wall for some sort of plywood storage possibly, uh, or I'm more than likely going to put a TV uh, here or put a TV over here somewhere I haven't fully decided yet. And then my assembly table, obviously you see there, this will be my miter saw station. I've got some small drawer organization. I've got some large drawer organization. And then all of these will probably be sustainer pullout trays. Um, I will not have a lot of those incorporated into my new assembly table, uh, but there will be some. This right here is my dust collection unit. And yes, I've gotten a lot of questions about that. I will be going with the Harvey G700 Gyro Air unit. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'll come back to that here in just a moment. I've got my electrical panel here. This will not be the electrical panel that powers the shop. Rather, I will be installing a secondary panel from this panel, which will only be for the shop. And I'm basically adding a 30 breaker panel uh, either underneath it or off to the side of it. Yeah, I know it's taking up more wall space, but it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, if anything, I'll probably just mount it directly below if I'm allowed to and that box will be for everything for the shop. So 
uh, wired into that box will be all of my outlets, which I will also talk about here in just a moment. And then I'm gonna have a mini split installed and I'm installing the mini split right here on this wall and this black box that you see above it is actually going to be one of the uh, filter setups that Jay has built and put on his mini splits uh, just to help keep dust and everything out of the mini split itself. And then what you see here will basically be the backdrop of the majority of my videos, um, which this black portion here, I'm actually going to be trying out some of this uh, OmniWall uh, pegboard, metal pegboard style storage. And this is where I'm actually going to have all of my uh, major Festool tools that I use at my assembly table on a regular basis out and on shelves uh, in the open, easy for me to grab. What you see over here, this is just some uh, vertical lumber storage area. Something that I plan on doing here is putting some of those racks. I've got about three feet of space or so, three, four feet of space above this section. Otherwise it would just go unused and I'll do some horizontal lumber storage if I need to. Honestly, I don't keep a ton of lumber uh, in my shop. So not too big of a concern. Um, and that's pretty much it. There'll be a couple, you know, cabinets, the cabinets that I built, I'll probably put those in a couple uh, various places. So let's talk about the electrical outlets real fast. So this that you see right here, this very small one, this is one outlet that I have in the shop. And this, see if I can get on it. This right here is another outlet that I have in the shop. Those are the only two outlets that are in this garage. So obviously I need to run a lot of stuff. Something that I kept in mind is the placement of my tools heavily weighed on where I was gonna run my electrical, right? So the great thing about having walls that are exposed and not drywalled yet is the electrical is gonna be very easy to run. So what I'm doing, this is gonna be a 220 tool. 110, 220, 220, 220, 110, 110, 110. So anything that you see it's red is 220, right? So CNC machine is gonna get plugged in here on its own uh, circuit. This will be a quad receptacle for 110. That's where my computer will plug into or anything else that I need to plug into. Um, this right here will be an additional uh, 220 outlet in the event that I ever make any changes and put anything against the wall. I have it there. I'd rather future proof the shop, right? I have it ready. It's open. Why not just do it now? This right here will be a quad 110. This is where this will plug into. Uh, this will be a 220. My dust collector will plug into that as well as the mini split will now be wired directly into the box. This one right here, as you can see, is an overhead one. And so this is going to be uh, give me the ability to plug in both my joiner planer combo and my table saw itself. And then the cords are just going to run up the pipe and plug directly into the ceiling. And then this right here will be another quad 110 where my drill press will hook into um, as well as the new motor, which will be side mounted for the garage door, will also plug in to that receptacle as well. So that is the power situation. And to go back on something I said, I actually do have two more outlets that are in the ceiling, one here and one roughly right here. That's what the motors for the garage door did plug into. What I will be installing there is one of the retractable extension cords. It just so happens that one is directly over the assembly table and the other one is roughly right about here. And that is how I will be able to easily plug in my router table when needed. I do also have that plug there that I showed you if I needed to use that. But that is the layout, that is the electrical. This is my final shop plan and this is what I'm moving forward with. Uh, now to talk about the ductwork real quick, that will actually be here very soon. And so what this is, is a six inch inlet that goes on the Harvey unit. And I know if you if you look here, you can see that it's a straight pipe and it's obviously not on here. What I'm actually doing is running the pipe and then doing a 30 to 30 to get it close to the wall. And then it'll just go on the wall, but it's all metal, everything. It's all six inch up to here. Um, and then I'll be going 45 up the wall. 
this will be a six, six, and a four outlet, and that four will go to my uh, bandsaw, running six all the way up here, six, and then everything will come out to a four. So this will now be a four, and then this, oh, sorry about that, this will also be four. So starting all the way at the tool, four coming into six, coming down all the way into the machine. And so that's kind of how I am dealing with this. This gave me the ability to really have the most minimal amount of turns, bends. Uh, I can run it against the wall. I only have one overhead pipe and it really just worked out great. And so some of the connections that I have, I just want to talk about. This will be a swivel ball head that will travel freely with the CNC machine. And then here, I will have a three-way branch, uh, four into three four-way branches. One will go to the table saw, one will go to the joiner planer combo, and then I'll have a longer hose auxiliary, probably one of the Rockler hoses, uh, auxiliary hose here that will just hang on a hook, and I will be able to take that off to clean up the shop, as well as um, plug into my router table when need be. I can just take it, quick connect, uh, I can also wheel this over here. I can take that quick connect. Everything's good to go. So that is the new layout of my uh, new garage shop. And I've put a lot of thought into this. I'm sure that some things will change over time. And I'm sure that some things might change while I'm doing the design. But quite honestly, I really think that this is going to be the best setup. The only thing that I'm undecided on is this three tables, which would be basically a four by eight assembly table, or if I'm just going with two. Um, and I'll have a separate video that kind of talks about the whole process uh, of my new uh, assembly table. This is a design that I came up with, but I found a really, really awesome design and have been working with uh, Matthew, the person that I found on Festival Owners Group that actually came up with the design and it is incredible and I cannot wait to get started. So I'm still talking with him on maybe some things that he did with it or maybe would do differently, and he's really been a huge help uh, so far, and I'll leave some information to his uh, Instagram page down below if you wanna go check out what I'm talking about. So anyway, that's it. That is my shop, and I'm really excited to get started uh, on it. Electrical's getting done this week. Drywall's getting done next week. Garage door stuff's getting done uh, at the end of this week, and. As soon as I get all that done, I can go ahead and get started building this uh, setup here if I choose to go with that and this setup here. So anyway, if you guys have any questions about anything that I covered in this video or the layout, please feel free to leave them down below. Uh, I'd be happy to answer anything that you guys have, uh, whether it's about the electrical, the duct work, the layout, just anything in general, please do not hesitate. Uh, to leave those questions down below. And then if there's something you want to see in more detail in one of the future videos, uh, please feel free to mention it and I will try to work those requests in to those other videos. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in part two. Take care.